Good morning. That's not the view you're uh, used to seeing, is it? This is Wingham High Street, about 8.30 on a Thursday morning. So I've had to run a quick errand, so I'm now late for work. Don't know what's causing the hold down. This used to be a 30 mile an hour zone. It is now, they've now, now reduced this to a 20 mile an hour zone. Well, completely ignoring the fact that if you can get through this zone at all, you're doing really well. <sighs> that car's turning right. That car's going left and it's probably not gonna let me in. That car's turning right and it's gonna let me in, good. There's about a quarter mile queue behind me. Let's see what's holding up Wingham High Street this lovely morning. It's nice, isn't it? Picturesque, isn't it? If you're not from other parts of the world, you can see the old overhanging cottages and the uneven walls. And there's a thatched roof or two. It's quite nice, actually. This view, this from here, Wingham High Street does look quite nice. Hasn't got much in the way of shops. There's no Starbucks. There's no... Uh, that's all out of town. Here we go. This is the problem. Or one of them, anyway. Eight o'clock is the time that all the um, agricultural tractors start working. So what do you want to talk about today? We talked about uh, politics, didn't we, yesterday? Monetary and fiscal policy and the actual, the real reason why things are happening and not the, you know, the chatterati reason, the uninformed, ill-informed, and the people with their own agenda reason, the Kay Burleys of the world, trying to promote a certain narrative. Today I thought I'd talk to a, a bit about sales. Um, sales is a dirty word for a lot of people, you know, people like, they, 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 I'm a dentist, I don't do sales. Sales. Sales is what you do when you can't get a job in anything else, isn't it? They equate sales with um, call centres, uh, ringing cold calling people and saying, have you thought of um, taking out, um, you know, boiler insurance or whatever? <laughs> and that's the, that's their concept of what it's like to be a salesperson. Their um, concept of what it's like to be a, a buyer is a very, is an altogether different Thing. Um, everyone, I'd say, with very few exceptions, likes to go shopping. And I'm not talking about grocery shopping or clothes shopping, which is universally popular amongst a certain gender. But um, just, uh, you know, uh, if you're in the market for a nice watch, or uh, if you're thinking of buying a car, from the male point of view, these are the things that are... Um, and you come across a salesman who's really sort of good at his job and sort of quite understands what you want quite quickly and he's very helpful and um, perhaps tells you how you can solve your problem in ways that you hadn't really thought of or for less money than you thought you were going to have to spend, etc., etc. And we all like that sort of shopping experience. We like being sold to and we like being sold to really, really well. You know, like if you're in a, a top hotel, you know, and you know when you go to the desk that you're going to be sold to real well. Um, and if you go to a nice restaurant, you know that you're going to be sold to well. And so um, being on the other side of that, uh, uh, oh, I'm actually sorry, sorry. I've decided I'm going to do it now, but yeah, I'm going this way. This is the quickest way. Let me make sure I've got my lights on. It's very dim today. It's very, you probably don't see that on the camera so much. So, <coughs> so what do you need to know about selling as a dentist? Well, the answer to that is absolutely everything. You know, I don't think that, you know, there's, there's no, such book as selling for dentists there's just books about selling and one of the best that my brother and I read and we're both dentists um, was was by a guy called Richard Denny 
and uh, I forget the title now, but I'm sure you can uh, find it. I mean, it must be 20 years in print now, at least. And you can, and it's very Americanized. It's very, uh, uh, it, might, it might be called guerrilla marketing. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, it's, uh, if, if you want like a window into the world of sales, then that's the way to do it. Well, selling, of course, is people think of it as um, getting people to buy stuff that they don't really need or want. Uh, but salespeople know that that's actually not that's the that's the opposite. Uh, and you can't get people to buy stuff they don't really need or want. I mean, okay, we've all been in a shop and come out with something and thought, actually, I didn't really need or want that. But that's not because you didn't need or want it at the time. You, you wanted it at the time. And also, you have to uh, differentiate between, again, need and want. One, you can want something that you might not need it. You know, you can want a third wristwatch, but you don't need one to tell the time. But if you've got a dicky heart, then not only do you want a heart transplant, but you need a heart transplant. So the trouble is that people don't always buy based on what they need. To buy based on need, you have to but also convert that need into a want. You have to understand, you have to explain to people what they need, and they may not even always know what they need. Um, and certainly they may be coming to you for advice on what they do need and then uh, but they still won't buy it unless they decide that, they, that it's a want so I'll use, a, I'll use a couple of cases in point both of these happened in the last two days to me one was a guy who rang up and because we put people's numbers on I put people's numbers in my mobile phone when they ring what happens is we have uh, Vonage and the Vonage system is set to ring the surgery number and my mobile number simultaneously, okay? <coughs> and if I'm out and about and I know the surgery's open, I know when a patient's ringing, but I don't answer it because I put a bracket P after it, which stands for patient. And so I don't answer unless it's out of hours, in which case I might answer, you know. Anyway, this, um, this guy rang up and his name came up. And sometimes if it's a business, it, their name will come up because on Google, if it's a business and they're on Google Maps, then it will come up. But his name came up, so immediately I'm on the computer looking up his details. And sure enough, he turned out, he'd been in about three, four months ago. His teeth are wrecked. He's got fillings in all his upper front teeth and everything need filling. He got an abscess in his upper left four, which is why he came in, because he had pain. And um, he said, um, uh, he said, oh, I'm trying to find a dentist that can do some work for me. I said, oh, is that, oh, is that you? What's the name? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I said, oh, I said, you've been in to see us, haven't you? Yeah, he came and see us about four months ago. Now, Normally, when you do that to a patient, you know, if someone brings up and says, oh, can I, can I book an appointment? And you say, oh, hello, Patricia, how are you? And they go, oh, my God, you recognise my voice, blah, blah, blah. Because you don't tell them that it's just come up on your phone. Because that's a bit of magic that's reserved for us nerds. But the buggles don't understand fully, so. But it's nice for people to think that you know who they are, you know. So it's a bit of trickery, but it's a nice bit of trickery and it makes them feel good. So uh, so um, in his case, he didn't really want to be recognised <laughs> because he wasn't particularly proud of what had happened last time he came in, which is that he'd done a runner with the antibiotics and we'd never seen him again. Well, which is fair enough. I mean, you know, not an easy guy, every right to do that, but uh, uh, his teeth, you know, so... <laughs> He didn't end up owing us any money or anything. He just, 
what had happened was his need for a root filling, we hadn't converted his need for a root filling into a want. Basically, he had a, he wanted uh, pain relief. Oh, okay, Mr. Nissan. We all know you need a new exhaust. So, he, he had a need for pain relief, and then we provided the pain relief, and then that he'd satisfied the need, and, that, and then and the want, and it had gone. So he never came back. Anyway, he's ringing up again, and he says, um, I've got a problem, he says, my front teeth are breaking down, and they're shredding my lip, right? And uh, so I need to have it fixed. I think I need a couple of fillings. And I said to him, well, well according to our notes, you need about 10 fillings. But I said, we can just fix a couple if you like. And, uh, so basically you want to book in to have some fillings done, do you? Do you, want, do you want to like, do you want to finally book in to get your fillings done after thinking about it, staying on it for four months and waiting for them to get worse? And he's like, well, no, really, first of all, he was a bit miffed that we recognised him. And secondly, uh, we, he was a bit double miffed that I described it as booking in to have your fillings done, you know, which we told you about, rather than uh, the sort of ad hoc pay-as-you-go emergency treatment, which is what he really wanted. So he's like, yeah, 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 I think that, I suppose that is what I want, yeah. So, anyway, I said, um, when, uh, I said, like, we could do emergency treatment straight away. In other words, if, you, if anything needs filing off, or temporary fillings or anything. And uh, we'll get you back in a couple of weeks and get the permanent fillings done. Three weeks, I think, we're booked ahead. Oh, three weeks, he says. I don't think I can wait three weeks. Uh, can you do anything sooner? Now, this guy was a member of an ethnic group that is well known for negotiating on price and asking for more than you've offered and always wanting to come in sooner than the first appointment that you've given them. So, you know, and <laughs> it's like, you know, you just deal with it. So I said, no. I said, yeah, well, I mean, my answer is always yes, if we get a cancellation. But at the moment, we're on the end of a queue and, uh, you know, with everyone else. So, oh, uh, well, in that case, well, I'm gonna, I don't think I can wait three weeks. I'm going to ring, I'm going to carry on ringing around and seeing if anyone could do it sooner than three weeks. So, fine. We offered to get him out of pain in a, you know, 48 hours, 24, 48 hours, whatever. He didn't want that, he wanted the definitive treatment done. And, uh, and he wanted that done probably within 48 hours. He didn't, you know, he couldn't wait three weeks, so that's fair. Now, and I said to the girls, do we want that sort of patient as a patient? Are we, you know, someone who only has their treatment done on an ad hoc basis and is constantly complaining about waiting times and, uh, and doesn't take my advice, doesn't doesn't do the, what we recommend, and uh, is constantly complaining about price, time, and stuff like that. And the answer is no, we don't need the stress. We obviously don't. So if he rings again, I shall tell him that um, we we can't take him on, we're full up. Anyway, I mean, he hasn't rung back, so perhaps he's got in somewhere else. That's great, that's great. Now, in contrast, we had another patient who came in, the day before yesterday, I think, and um, he got anodontia. So basically, let's ignore the lower jaw for the time being, but just in the upper jaw, which is the one he was concerned about, which is the one that everybody sees, he got 7, 6, 3, 1, 1, 3, 6, 7. And he told me all the others just never came through. Which is fine. I mean, I don't care if they were taken out or never came through. But that's the point, is that's what we're dealing with. Now, the one and the threes are perfect. No problem at all. No decay, no fillings or anything. The sixes, one of them's got quite a bit of decay in it, and the other one is filled. And the sevens, as far as I know, are fine. So, the question is, how do you restore a complete dentition based on six teeth, which are the six, the three, and the one, the one, the three, and the six, right? Now, I know 
you know, someone in Harley Street is shouting, you just file, file all six teeth down, get a superstructure made up in, I don't know, Gradia or uh, porcelain, bonded metal and whatever, and just stick it all on, right? 30 grand in your trouser pocket, done, sorted. But I was a bit, I'm a bit reluctant to do that because I think that is a bit overkill. So we come up with a, no, I'm jumping a bit because basically I was the third dentist that he uh, consulted and the second dentist he consulted that day. And the first dentist was his NHS dentist who said that he probably needs some implants. And that they couldn't do anything. And they've made him a, they've made him a partial up a, acrylic denture. But what they'd done, he said that they'd put filling in this decayed upper left six three times and the filling had fallen out three times. And this is what had prompted him to um, decide that he wanted to have something permanent done. He was fed up with having anodontia and he wanted a set of teeth like everybody else. He's about 42, so he's you know, giving me some credit. He's, he's been severe for a long time. Hasn't he? Anyway. So he came in with a quote that he'd had from another private dentist this morning, which basically was um, implants and uh, a sinus lift in the 4-5 area, uh, bone grafting, and uh, came to about seven and a half grand. But you know, for, I mean, it was um, implant supported bridge work. I think that's the best way to describe it. Uh, seven and a half grand. So, um, and he was nice. He, he let us photocopy this thing, and I looked at it. And it was a one-page, one-page quote, seven and a half grand. So, we had a dentist, uh, a dentist who owned my practice before I bought it. He was the master of the one-page quote, and we used to argue about this. And I said to him, "You can't." tell a patient that they need something like implant supported bridge work and just give them the list of items that you're going to do in computer code and the prices and the total and the payment terms and nothing at all about you know no no uh, information written information and just say oh yeah we discussed it all in the surgery it just doesn't you know you can't do that and my quotes are the exact opposite. They're 14 pages long. A exquisitely crafted boilerplate text that covers everything uh, that could go wrong and the chances of it going wrong, etc., etc. Can I overtake this guy? No, no, conditions are too. I would have done 20 years ago, but I'm not going to do it now. So, anyway, and it was in a cardboard folder like you get from a state agent you know where they give you all the house particulars and they put it in a cardboard folder with their name on the front and the picture on the front of the folder was the surgery and obviously the dentist had gone out with his iPhone and taken a picture of the surgery and I said I want a thousand covers you know put my one page quotes in <laughs> <coughs> so <clears throat> I said to Lou, "This is what we're this is what we're competing with now, estate agents, you know, dental estate agents." Oh, where are you? Oh, you're coming up that way, are you? Okay, yeah, go around the wrong side of the road, aren't we? Fire engine. What catches fire on a day like this? Honestly, it must be a flood engine. That's all I can say. I'm going to stay out of the way in case he comes around the roundabout and starts to come up here. No, he's going the other way. Okay. So, so anyway, we sat down and had a chat with him and, and it, you know, it seemed quite obvious to me that he wasn't all that brilliantly happy about having a sinus lift and some bone, blah, blah, blah. And I think what this dentist had sort of mistakenly was, was selling to him poorly because what happened was he was like, oh, yeah, we, yeah, we do all that. Oh, yeah, you come to the right place here, you know. Oh, we, we do everything. We do sinus lifts. We do bone grafts. That's, you know. So we can do that on you, we can do this on you. <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Now you've got it in gear, off you go. Get the old rubber band wound up. 
And so what I've done is I've come up with a solution whereby we um, put bridges between his uh, threes and his sixes after restoring the six. And then I'm going to do a, a Maryland, uh, sort of reverse Maryland to replace his twos off his ones. So it'll be four units and the two will be the Pontic and then we'll have two wings on the centrals and then the two on the other side will be like a Pontic on the other side. So the whole thing will be uh, like flying Pontics, but um, they're fairly small teeth and um, each one will be attached to two teeth. So uh, at any one time, uh, it's unlikely it'll come, be, come debonded. And also it's got the advantage of um, being modular so that if anything goes wrong with any of the, like the bridge work on the left, you can have that made, repaired or uh, remediated without uh, affecting the front ones or the right ones. Which if you were, you know, if you come up with a solution to file them all down, I just... And also at the other advantage that it didn't uh, involve um, surgery. Now, believe it or not, our quote came in within a Nat's whisker of the seven and a half he'd been quoted anyway. Which was about the budget, you know, he said, he said to me, like, the money's available. So, but, you know, I think a lot of dentists would have taken a diabolical liberty with a comment like that and thought, well, he's, he's prepared to spend pretty much anything to get himself out of his misery, so I'll, I'll bump it up and tell him it's 12 or 10 or something. But we don't, we just type it in the computer and then it comes out what it comes out at and I'm quite happy with seven grand for that and he's already paid six of it because he's so delighted. But he rang up that evening and said, well he didn't ring up, he sent me an email and he said, uh, you know, I can't work out where the filling is. Includes the filling included or do I have to go back to my old dentist to get the filling done? And, and you're like, oh bless, you know. I mean, why would we send him back to his old dentist to get the filling done? Just like, well, you don't want to touch that tooth like it's radioactive. I mean, no, of course, we, we the filling was on there. I mean, after I sort of looked at the quote, I thought, oh, shit, we left the filling off. But no, it was on there because what we've done is we quoted for a core because it's going underneath the bridge. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, all in all, Uh, I, I then I told him that he has listed as CR-Core, that is filling. And it's going to end up underneath the back end of the bridge, so he's happy with that. And then uh, 15 minutes later, I got another email, this is while I'm in the middle of my dinner, saying uh, what sort of guarantee you're going to give me on that. Um, which, you know, is, is always, it's not a difficult question to answer, but it's, um, it's difficult to know exactly what the patient means by that. I mean, usually they mean what's going to happen if it's off the looks crap or it falls out in a couple of months or something um, and um, what I do is I just send them details of the GGC private patient complaints and I said look you've got this you know if if anything happens in the first year I said then obviously it depends on the circumstances we'll have to have a chat and who's what needs doing and who's going to pay for it etc I said that that's never happened that I've had a bridge fall out in the first year and then even if it does fall out in the first year, it's your first one that does it, then, and you're not happy with the solution, then um, you've got the GDC as a backstop. So you just get in touch with them, it's free of charge, and they'll have a look and they'll decide whether I've been fair with you, and if not, then they'll have something to say about it. So basically, the, that GDC private patients thing is a one-year guarantee. Really, I, I would think, now that I've, I haven't looked at it like that, but I think it is. Um, you can say all our all our treatment is guaranteed pretty much for a year because if, if we don't sort it out for you and something goes wrong and if we don't sort it out then you've got the GDC to say what, what what's equitable and to arbitrate. Yes. So anyway, he's happy as Larry and he's writing us all these lovely emails saying he felt most comfortable with us and you know, he didn't like the atmosphere at all these other places and, you know, I think because they're all, because what we were doing is we were genuinely trying to understand what his problem was, what, why he'd come now and not a year ago or a year in the future and, and we had a solution to his problem and then we decided, um, 
And then we explained to him in simple language what it was, and then answered any follow-up questions. Oh. Oh. Anyway, that's my patient, so I've got to run. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.